will you take a look at this cover? I'm going to just hold it up here for whichever of our 11 cameras uh, can take a look at this Time Magazine story, okay? Yeah, there he is, and he's the kid who gets made fun of, but probably less now because there aren't that many kids that are in any better shape than this who are going to make fun of the chubby kid in school. Our supersized kids uh, in... Um, an issue of Time Magazine from a couple of weeks ago, special health issue. And the subtitle is, It's Not Just Genetics and Diet. Uh, there is, in fact, a juvenile obesity epidemic. Bob Davis, do you agree with those dramatic terms? Definitely. It is an epidemic. Changing America One Athlete at a Time is the book uh, that Bob Davis is responsible for, Strength of America Incorporated. Uh, is his organization. We're going to be talking about all of that. But obese kids, are we talking about just chubby kids because they've always been around, or is it a more serious problem in America? It's a more serious problem. Really, it started out years ago with just the kids that you know, wanted to play sports, had a hard time keeping up. The problem is we've got so many families now that are two-job families or separated families, and it's very hard to, to make that time for the dinner. We don't sit down at, at home anymore and really make the choices that they need to with the foods. It's much easier to drive through the fast food or the pizzas and get something fast and easy. And with the decline of PE in, in schools anymore, the kids just aren't active. If they're not involved in athletics, they're not doing anything. Combination of those two things uh, can be disastrous, though. Let's start with diet. Uh, strength and conditioning coach at the University of Nebraska. Man, if you're talking about University of Nebraska, you're talking about some big trucks going through there. Yeah, the good old days. Uh, but when you're talking about uh, kids on a lesser uh, athletic level, high school, elementary school, how can they find out what nutrition guidelines they're supposed to be if mom and dad are still feeding them greasy fat stuff? Well, and that's one of the biggest problems is we have, even as adults, don't have the right message. We still are looking for that great diet, this specific pill that they need to take, or this ab machine that's going to reduce their waistline. And really, it's a combination of a lot of different things. We, need, we teach these kids it's important to get rest. It's important to get out and exercise, do something every day. Uh, and they need to eat properly. Our kids, we teach them they need to eat four to six times a day, but things in moderation. We don't want them going to the fast food for breakfast, lunch, dinner and then at nighttime having that bowl of ice cream. What about the school cafeterias? They're working on it. Things are getting better. Uh, they're starting to introduce more vegetables. When we were in school, the time was, you know, vegetable was a ketchup, you know, and they're understanding that wasn't good enough. <laughs> but, Bob, it's 2008. It's America. In spite of our economic problems, we still have an abundance of almost anything. Yeah. What, except information on what to eat? That's the biggest problem. It's just education. Because it's not that we don't have enough food. As we've been told as kids, you know, eat all, everything on your plate. Well, now it's understand that that plate needs to get a little bit smaller. And it's hard for the kids to make that change if the parents are still bringing home the chips and the soda and the easy fast food things and not making them choices themselves. Yeah, well, what about us as villains, though, in media? Uh, how about all of those commercials and all those messages that begin with, get your burger now, it's bigger than your Aunt Harriet. Yeah. I mean, everything. It's always a matter of pile on those Everest-sized portions. And that's where the title in Time Magazine came from, Supersized Kids, because we want to get the most for our money. But what's really important for them to understand is we tell them, it's okay, you, you can have a hot dog, you can have a hamburger, you can have your pizza, but just not meal after meal. Now a lot of the fast food places are making the choices and understanding the pressure, so they're letting you make the choices. You can have that cheeseburger that you want, which is fine, but instead of the fries, have the fruit. Or instead of the soda, have the milk or have water. We just don't need 1,300, 1,500 calories in one meal. We need to eat around four to 500 calories in each meal. And our biggest problem, not only with the calorie amount, is the kids need to understand they need protein in every meal. Most of them go 12 hours or more at night without food from their dinner to breakfast. And breakfast for the first thing is a Pop-Tart or a bowl of sugary cereal, no or little protein at all. And then an hour later in school, they're falling asleep. They can't concentrate. Excuse me, do we have a nation filled with orphans? Mom and dad are around somewhere, or maybe it's just mom or dad, 
But the reality is, is that the parent is still supposed to be an authority figure. Right. Well, what happened? Well, a lot of pressure on it, but one of the big problems, like you said, it's, it's an either or, sometimes not always mom and dad, or if so, they're working two jobs and always busy. So and they're it's not, not that too that's well a, themselves. No, let's acknowledge the fact that we're not just saying, uh, uh, let's do this as a family. A lot of times, mom and dad are chowing down on the junk foods that you were just talking about. Right. And, and you know, it's, it's easy, it's quick, they're tired at the end of the day. It's much easier to drive through the fast food or order the pizza than do anything else. Yeah, what do we do about it, though? Well, our biggest thing that we try to tell is you've got to, you know, we tell the kids, we get them empowered to make those choices and help out at home. We actually have kids work on meal plans and make choices so they understand what to eat, how to eat. They fill out a meal plan for us so they'll know how many calories they're actually consuming, how much of that is protein, carbohydrates, or fat. And they don't have to do that for every meal, but we have them do it for three days in a row so they have a better understanding of really what I'm eating. Well, then who's we? Who is we? Is that Strength, Strength of America? America? Right, my company. And that's what we started when we talked about Nebraska. When I was there from 85 to 89, it was working with the advanced athlete, the power, but we always wanted, my wife and I, to try and really create a program to help fight the problem of, number one, at that time, 20 years ago, was reducing injuries in young athletes. But as it's progressed, it's really just keeping these kids active and, and taking care of themselves. It is said that professional athletes are in better shape, better condition now than any athletes that have ever played in any sport in the history of the planet. Is that true? Correct. Well, then how did they get there if they started being those kids that we were just talking about? Well, most of those were the kids that had, you know, the parents and the, and the people around them to help them make better choices. Education is the key to the program. And that's why, coming from Nebraska, my main goal wasn't the high school athletes. We wanted to work with these kids 8, 9, 10 years old and up before they developed a lot of these bad habits or catch them early enough that they're still willing to listen to an adult and make the changes in their lives and take charge of themselves. One of the things that absolutely frosts me, I've never been able to understand it, and I'm not somebody who lives in the past, but I'll tell you, the absence of PE in school, in some schools, the total absence of PE, no coaches, nothing except, yeah, go out, play on the monkey bars, and then come back in. Uh, unbelievable. And if it's unbelievable to me, I want to find out how you feel about it when we get back. Uh, the name of the organization, Strength of America, it's headquartered in Mesa. You do not have to go to Lincoln, Nebraska in order to find this gentleman. Uh, if you want to be a Cornhusker football player, well, that's your business. What we're talking about right now is just making sure that you have a healthy eight-year-old. As, um, as our guest tries to change America one athlete at a time. And I'm going to try to help as we continue this conversation on AZTV. This is the Patrick Mann Show.